and because he was a man whose name will be ever enduring in the hearts of not only Ghanaians, but all of the African people, perhaps even among many non-Africans, once they knew him as he really was, as I knew him. I first met Kwame Nkrumah at a ball in Accra when independence was gained in 1957, and he had become Ghana's first prime minister. As I am not a Ghanaian, but was born in South Africa, I feel I should lead up to this meeting by giving a few details of my own career. This will explain how I came to Ghana in the first place. I had led a happy enough life in South Africa, but there, but there the question of apartheid was always with us. My father was a successful rancher, businessman, and politician with positive ideas as to, educate, as to education and languages. I was the only child extremely happy with him and my mother who did everything for me. But what we all wanted was a sense of nationality, of belonging, of being. South Africa could not give us this. Apartheid works in a most peculiar fashion, difficult for the outsider to comprehend. The African is confined to a group area and must not buy property, own land, or set up business anywhere else. Any white area is absolutely forbidden. This absolute restriction is what is so degrading, especially to an educated black African. One feels frustrated and humiliated. This was probably even worse for me because there's a peculiar contradiction in this racial segregation. Okay, she goes on, on and on and on about South Africa. Let's come back to Ghana. My ambition was to be more than a teacher. She came in as a teacher. However good, in any of the lower schools or colleges, however, I learned all I could at university, eventually receiving my BA degree and a postgraduate university education diploma in many subjects. I went on to teach English for a few, English for a year at William Prescott High School. This is all South Africa. Let's move on to the next page. My parents understood these very same feelings. My father, in particular, had always encouraged his fellow Africans to be independently minded. He wanted his daughter to be so too. 